Welcome to our second Center Point Holy Week Reflection. Remember, before you watch the video, head to our website and download the Reflection Guide for today. To complete the reflection, you'll need two things besides your Bible and your family. You will need something that makes good smells. I'm using our diffuser here. Uh, if you don't have a diffuser, grab a scented candle, some perfume. Uh, get it working in your space so that your room begins to fill up with fragrant aroma. You also need access uh, at the end to YouTube or your preferred music streaming service because at the end of your time, we want you to listen to and reflect on a song that was written and inspired by the events we will read about today. Are you ready? Perfect. Let's begin. So twice in the last week of Jesus' life, something unexpected happens. Women come up to Jesus while he's eating, and they pour out expensive perfume on Jesus as an act of love and worship. Now, the first time this happens, uh, John tells us about it. It occurs in John 12, uh, 1 to 11. And what happens is Jesus is eating at the home of Lazarus and Martha and Mary, and these people are good friends. This family's very dear to Jesus. In fact, not long before the events of this story, Jesus had just raised Lazarus from the dead. And so in John 12, as Jesus reclines to eat a meal at Lazarus' house, Mary comes with a jar of expensive perfume, and she pours it out on Jesus' feet. The perfume she uses is an expensive one. It costs tens of thousands of dollars. And in the ancient world, the more expensive a perfume, the more fragrant it would be. And so as she pours this expensive perfume out on Jesus, as she washes his feet with her hair, soon the entire house fills with the fragrance of the rich perfume. Now one of the disciples is indignant. Judas Iscariot, Jesus' chief treasurer, he has a complaint. Why has this expensive perfume been wasted on Jesus' feet? I mean, it could have been sold for a lot of money. 300 denarii, that was like a year's wages for a day laborer. I mean, tens of thousands of dollars. Why couldn't this perfume have been sold and that money donated to a good cause to help the poor? Now, John tells us a little bit more about Judas. John tells us that Judas actually wasn't a philanthropist. He wasn't concerned about the poor. But as the chief treasurer, he was in the habit of stealing from Jesus. And so his desire is not to help the poor, but he wants to help himself. And he's indignant because he has lost an opportunity for profit. And so Jesus rebukes Judas. He says, leave her alone. But then Jesus says something even more unexpected. He says that Mary, in pouring out the perfume, is actually preparing his body for burial. Now, in Jesus' day, anointing the deceased with perfume was common. In fact, on Easter Sunday, that's what the women were on their way to do. They had only half prepared Jesus for burial, and they wanted to come and finish the job. But all this happens before his death. All of this happens before the disciples even realize that Jesus is going to die. And yet Jesus, in commenting about this act of love and reverence, he talks about how it's preparation for what's to come. Now, Jesus finishes up his meal. He leaves uh, Lazarus and Mary and Martha, and he goes about the rest of uh, Holy Week. And, and a few days later, uh, two days before the Passover, Jesus reclines at another meal. This time he's at the house of a man named Simon the leper. And here again is another man whose life has been radically impacted by Jesus. Jesus had healed Simon. And so Simon had opened his home to Jesus. He wanted to celebrate. He wanted to enjoy Jesus' presence. And once again, while Jesus is reclined at the table, uh, another woman comes, this time someone who's unnamed. She comes up to Jesus with another jar of expensive perfume. And this time she anoints Jesus' head. Now, once again, the beautiful fragrance fills the room. And once again, those around the temple are, or those around the table are incensed. And again, their concern is for the poor. They can't seem to handle the lavish worship Jesus is receiving. And once again, Jesus does the unexpected. He steps in to defend the woman. Now, Jesus does that a lot. That's not what's unexpected. No, what's unexpected is that once again, he references that he's being prepared for burial. I started to wonder, 
How long would that perfume soaked into Jesus's hair the way that it would? How long would that last? This is expensive perfume. Would he have smelled that perfume as he was arrested in the guardian in the garden? Would it have still clung to him through his trial, through his torture? On the cross, as Jesus breathed his last, would his final breath have been filled not only with the smell of his own blood, but would it also have been filled with the sweet smell of that perfume? I think so. But at this second display of love, Judas had had enough. Mark tells us that after this moment, Judas went to the chief priest to arrange to betray Jesus. And so here we have yet another unexpected thing. We have an unexpected action of love and worship, which Jesus says is preparation for his death. But we also also see how these acts of love prompt an act of betrayal. Judas can't handle the worship that is being lavished on Jesus. He can't handle it. So he goes to betray him. And as I reflected on these accounts, on the incredible love and generosity poured out on Jesus and the hardness of the hearts of some of those around the table, I started to ask myself the question, okay, God, how am I like Judas? How am I like those indignant disciples? What am I holding back from God? What spaces in my life where I value things, which I cling to as my own, where am I not surrendering to Jesus? See, Judas was quite concerned on the surface anyway with the poor. And so he desired to hold back worship from Jesus in order to help the poor. I mean, he really wanted to help himself, but but he felt like there were spaces where that worship should not be lavished on Jesus, where that sacrifice shouldn't go to Jesus because it should go other places. And so I started to ask myself again, what am I holding back from Jesus? Am I withholding my finances? Am I withholding from him relationships? Am I withholding from him uh, my kids? Am I holding them back? Am I not truly surrendered as it comes to their lives? Have I surrendered my careers, my dreams, my recreational activities? Where am I setting up boundaries and saying to Jesus, hey, you can have it all except for these places? Where am I not trusting that Jesus is really good? Because Mary and the unnamed woman, they'd seen Jesus. They'd seen him move in power. They had seen his love, and they were all in. They were 100% in love with Jesus, and so they worshipped him with extravagant generosity. They held nothing back. They poured it all out. And so today, friends, I want to pray for you. And then what we want to do is we want you to open your reflection guide. We want you to read the scripture passages in John and in Mark. And then we want you to take some time to reflect on your worship to reflect on your surrender. We want you to take some time to bow low before Jesus, the one who gave it all for you, and offer all of yourself back to him. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your incredible love. The cross truly does have the final word because on the cross, you demonstrated for us how much you loved us, how much you were willing to give all of yourself for us. And yet, Jesus, so often as we walk with you, uh, we hold back from you uh, because of fear, because of uh, mistrust, um, sometimes because of pride. We hold things back from you, and we don't truly surrender. But God, we know that anything that we withhold from you, uh, we withhold from your blessing as well. And God, we don't want to be a people who are stingy. We want to be like Mary and the unnamed woman. We want to pour out our hearts to you. And so, Father, as we move to the reflection time, would you guide us? Would you show us those places uh, where we're holding back? Would you help us to trust you fully to take those places and spaces in our lives and, and just continue to bring renewal and transformation? Would you help us to trust you? And uh, Jesus, we just want to worship you more. We want to bow low at your feet. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Continue to reflect with your family, and uh, God bless you today.